Not long ago, Tiberius was wounded on the battlefield. Fortunately, he was promptly saved by his subordinates. Back at the camp, Crassus criticized Tiberius's reckless behavior and also mentioned that Caesar, disguised as a wolf, had infiltrated Spartacus' wolf pack, hastening their demise. To establish military authority, deserters were dealt with severely. Crassus insisted on enforcing a law that had long been prohibited. He wanted the cowardly soldiers to know that desertion would have consequences worse than death at Spartacus' hands. Tiberius noticed that his loyal subordinate, who had rescued him, was also among the punished. He urgently wanted to find his father to save his good brother from punishment. But when the collective punishment arrived, hearing his father talk about the punishment rules sent shivers down Tiberius's spine. The following words from his father plunged Tiberius into deep despair. Anyone who survives the punishment will be exiled to the camps. Living among slaves and prostitutes, with meager food and clothing. Groups of ten draw stones, with one white stone representing death and nine black stones for survival. The person with the white stone will be stoned or clubbed to death by the nine people with the black stone. Here, there is no distinction of rank, even if you are brave and skilled in battle. If someone in your unit turns out to be a deserter, you are equally at risk. Luckily, Tiberius received a fortunate black stone, but his good subordinate across from him was unlucky. Tiberius struggled to accept this reality. Under General Crassus' command, the brutal collective slaughter punishment began officially. He helplessly watched as his loyal subordinates were beaten to death. The soldiers did not die with dignity on the battlefield but suffered such dishonorable deaths. With no other choice, Tiberius ended the lives of his subordinates. The effect of this punishment is obvious. From then on, in Crassus' army, there were no more desertions. Even in the face of great danger and hardship, they would charge forward without hesitation. If you even consider fleeing, your fellow soldiers will sternly prevent it. Even resorting to killing you directly, leaving the remaining soldiers to live without dignity. They were assigned to camps as attendants, living alongside prostitutes and slaves. Tiberius was among them, tormented by the deaths of his good subordinates. Gradually, he developed a hatred for his father. Their relationship could never return to what it once was. Then Crassus hoped to reconcile the father-son relationship through Kore, his lover. For many years, Kore had treated Tiberius as if he were her own family. She immediately told Tiberius that his father loves him more than anyone else. All these actions were for the sake of your future. Crassus could never have imagined that Tiberius's deep-seated hatred could no longer be healed. He is about to completely take away the father's most beloved woman to comfort his wounded heart. This is a morgue filled with corpses. The bodies are hanging from the rafters, appearing extremely terrifying and chilling. Spartacus is not in a hurry to bury these bodies. Instead, he has his brothers clean up their blood. They sprinkle salt to slow down the rate of decay as much as possible. Because they are going to use these corpses to carefully plan a major conspiracy. Their goal is to crush Crassus' legion of 10,000 men. Due to the killing of Roman prisoners, Spartacus and Crixus have had a falling out. Crixus secretly determines to take away his own followers and completely separate from Spartacus. The situation at this time is dire. Crassus' 10,000 troops have sealed off all land routes outside the city. The opportunity to part ways with Spartacus will only come when the defensive line is completely breached. Spartacus doesn't have much time to worry about it. The threat from the Roman army outside is increasing day by day. He has no choice but to leave Agrin in the city to take care of the remaining prisoners. This is to prevent impulsive actions by Crixus from causing trouble. Spartacus goes to the seaside and pays a large sum of money to the pirate leader. He intends to use the pirate ship and Gannicus to go on a mission at sea. The pirate leader only leaves behind one sailor who can operate the ship. Then he and his subordinates go into the city to enjoy themselves. Meanwhile, Caesar, who is not far away, is observing all of their actions. As soon as Spartacus leaves, Caesar immediately approaches Crixus. He pretends to casually reveal the news of Spartacus going to sea. Crixus, being a straightforward man, becomes furious and extremely angry upon hearing this. Spartacus hides everything he does from himself now. So he immediately goes with Naivia to find Agrin and verify the situation. Caesar's cunning plan succeeds, and he smirks with satisfaction on the side. Agrin expresses her stance without hesitation, fully supporting Spartacus. At this time, Spartacus is on his way to Sicily. That's because he learned from the pirate leader's mouth that Crassus' army is transporting supplies on Sicily. This time, he specifically takes more than 10 people, including Gannicus, to investigate the situation on Sicily. As soon as they arrive on the deserted island, they find Roman soldiers transporting provisions.
Within minutes, Spartacus and the others had decimated the few people in front of them. When they open the carriage, Gannicus and the others become extremely excited. What the pirate leader said was true, which means we have finally discovered a major weakness of the enemy. Meanwhile, Naivia on the city wall sees an unknown number of Roman soldiers appearing in the distance. Crixus wants to lead his brothers to a life and death battle with these Romans. Agrin speaks up, stating that the leader does not allow us to go out and engage the Roman army directly. The morale of the rebels is already high at this point. They are ready to disregard Spartacus' warning and go out to meet the enemy. Just when the situation becomes a dilemma, Spartacus arrives in time. Spartacus publicly announces the immediate release of all Roman prisoners. Crixus curses him, but Spartacus' prestige is difficult to suppress, leaving Crixus dumbfounded. Spartacus bends down and removes Leda's shackles in front of everyone. He explains that the person who harmed you before has lost their reason and is no longer one of us. Now that Crixus does not follow orders, we are about to part ways. I will take those who are loyal to me to Sicily. They will be personally escorted by Spartacus, causing a commotion among the slaves. Crixus wants to stop it, but he is powerless and can only watch as Leda and the prisoners leave the city. Crixus follows Spartacus all the way, getting angry and constantly berating him. He accuses him of recklessly releasing the prisoners, which will bring us great danger. They have been in the city for so long, and they have seen and heard everything clearly. At this point, Spartacus openly reveals his plan. The reason I let the prisoners out of the city is to pass information to Crassus. I want Leda to tell Crassus in person that we have completely severed ties. They will mistakenly believe that we will part ways and go to Sicily, thus falling into our trap. The Roman army's provisions are currently on Sicily. Once Crassus receives the news, he will immediately send a large army to rush to Sicily. He will go to save his own supplies, and that's when our opportunity will arise. Crixus, along with half of the brothers, will depart from the north, crossing the Melia Ridge. They will attack the remaining enemy forces and give Crassus a big surprise. Half of the group will head to Sicily, and the other half will launch a sneak attack on the enemy's rear. At this time, we will make use of the hundreds of preserved corpses that we have prepared earlier. We will dress them up and have them stand on the city walls and inside the city. Give the enemy an illusion that the number of people inside the city hasn't decreased. The people who went to Sicily turned back midway. Engage the enemy at sea, creating a pincer attack on the Roman army. We will keep fighting until we defeat them one by one. Now, let's not dwell on the past, unite and cooperate to defend together. All plans proceed as usual until midnight, with disguised bodies hanging on the city walls. The city is overcrowded, and everyone has moved out of the city. Caesar, at this moment, always feels that something is amiss. He drew his sword and killed a couple of the men next to him. Only then did they realize Caesar's true identity. In order to stay alive, the man hastily promises Caesar, I can take you to Spartacus and kill him together. Caesar reveals an evil smile and directly kills him with a single blow. Meanwhile, on the other side, Spartacus and Gannicus arrive at the dock, waiting for the pirate ship to approach. The pirates are delayed and haven't arrived yet. Seeing the pirate leader again, Spartacus notices the lack of yesterday's enthusiasm in them. Moreover, one of the attendants is missing, and the pirate leader draws his weapon directly. Spartacus realizes that something is wrong, and suddenly, a large number of Roman soldiers appear from the ship's cabin. At this moment, Caesar suddenly appears. He takes advantage of Spartacus' unpreparedness and stabs him in the shoulder. Gannicus reacts quickly and strikes him back with an elbow hit. So why did the pirates betray them? It turns out that earlier in the afternoon, Leda, leading dozens of captives, arrived at Crassus' camp. She immediately informed Crassus' subordinates of all the information she had in the city. The subordinates fell for it immediately and took Leda to report to Crassus. They directly suggested that Crassus send half of his forces to rescue the military supplies on Sicily Island, while the remaining half launches a frontal attack on the city. However, the cunning Crassus would not be fooled. He knows well that pirates are driven by self-interest. The fact that Spartacus can bribe the pirates makes it even simpler for someone as wealthy as Crassus. Besides, the pirate leader knows the extent of Crassus' wealth and power. They directly collaborate with the pirates to deceive Spartacus, catching him off guard. At this time, the rebel forces are still assembling at the back door. Spartacus and Gannicus quickly find themselves surrounded by Roman soldiers. Caesar immediately summons dozens of soldiers to rush up the city tower, preparing to open the main city gate and allow the Roman army waiting outside to enter the city. But he was found out. 
Agrin leaps down from the city wall and the three of them charge directly towards the Roman soldiers. The battle-hardened gladiators fight well. One against three is simply unbeatable. On the other side, Gannicus and Spartacus are heavily surrounded. They are already tired from the fight, and just as they are about to lose their strength, Crixus lets out a loud roar and jumps into the encirclement, engaging in battle. It turns out that the rebel forces received the message and immediately returned to rescue them. The Roman soldiers gradually fall into a disadvantage, and the situation reverses. Caesar realizes that things are not going well and immediately shouts for the soldiers to open the city gate. Two soldiers climb up the city gate and pull the ropes. The city gate is about to open. At this critical moment, a gladiator with a huge axe rushes up the city gate and kills the soldiers. He quickly cuts the rope, and the city gate closes again. In the next few minutes, all the soldiers are slaughtered. At this moment, Caesar, standing nearby, sees that he has been defeated. He quickly picks up some nearby pitch and throws it towards the city gate. He grabs a torch and throws it at the gate. In times of trouble, true colors are revealed. This unexpected event makes the two estranged individuals set aside their grievances and reconcile. However, they haven't had a chance to clean up the battlefield yet. In the distance, Crassus' large army is rushing towards the city. The city is now empty, and defending it is meaningless. Spartacus can only order a temporary retreat to the mountains. Meanwhile, inside the city, Agrin and others are preparing to kill the spy Caesar. Just as they are about to succeed. Suddenly, there is a loud noise from the blazing city gate. 